Get in, nerds. We are playing Victoria 3. We're still working on protectionism here, and I think we're going to focus today on getting a military reform done. Um, we got a lot of siege artillery, and we want to have heavy tanks, because siege artillery are not as good as heavy tanks, and it's not close. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to work on that. Um, I'm going to swap all of our armies over to using the heavy tanks method as their primary method. Uh, for artillery, that is. Um, and we're going to get... So we've got some armies that actually need... We're, we're going to do a tank expansion. That's, that's what we're going to do. That's the short version. Um, I'm going to get the Romelli Ordosu up to 90... Uh, infantry, and then we're going to throw another 15 heavy tanks in there. Maybe we'll actually, let's go ahead and reduce the number of artillery here straight away. Um, we'll put some more infantry in here. How many more do we need? Uh, three more. And then we'll put up some heavy tanks. Got about 20 battalions of heavy tanks to get started. We'll go from there afterward. And there we go. I'm just going to get us going at speed one here um, while we work on this. So we got 10 battalions of heavy tanks in the Anadolu Ordesu. Let's go ahead and get... Let's actually bring mech infantry up to 100. And then we'll bring the tanks up with it. Oh, also, I've been looking at my production methods and I realized something. I'm pretty short on glass here. But I'm, I'm absolutely lousy with oil. So, I'm going to get my glassworks using the houseware plastics method. Ooh, and that gives us an event. I've actually never seen this event before. So we're going to take a look at it. Plastic production. The switch to plastic in our glassworks is set to revolutionize the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you a world first. Behold, this perfectly carved ivory chess piece. Beautiful, no? What if I were to tell you it is not ivory at all, but a new material known as plastic? Plastic is the future. This gives us 33% throughput. That's excellent. Or we should spread this knowledge to Gojam. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with... Um, wait, Gojam is this Ethiopia. Yeah, no, I don't. Plastic is the future. Uh, Germany shares Pabrine solution. After discovering a method of reliably separating out Pabrine infected silkworm eggs, Germany has publicized the process internationally. By following the steps outlined in the released papers, we are now capable of replicating the German successes in the field. From 4 to 6 o'clock in the evening, all the couples arranged separately on the small cloths. Then are arranged separately on the small cloths. Then immediately afterwards, they are discarding, throwing the males without worrying. They're discarding the males without worrying about their more or less corpuscular state. After the females have laid eggs, they are each locked up in a corner of their linen with the aid of a pin, preferably passing it, it through the wings so that the moth cannot travel. Send their scientists our thanks. Gives. Ooh, that would make us owe them an obligation, potentially. But it would improve relations, or we will not become obliged to them. I'm going to do the second one. I don't want to owe them anything. Um, relations are not great, but they're not terrible, either. All right. So, embargo, embargo, not worried about that. So, we're working on getting our armies built up. So I think we'll go up to a nice even hundred with the Anadolu War to sue. That'll make us a nice solid force. Got plenty of job seekers in Tabriz. So we'll build there. Persia generally has quite a bit of... Uh, labor available here. Oh, Khorasan has a good amount of labor available. Let me see. That's 20. 
we're going to need an additional 13. So we'll build some of those up around here. should be enough. Yep, there's 33. And then we'll build up another 15 battalions of heavy tanks. Um, we'll throw those in Ankara, Huda Vendigar, and Tabriz. Alright. That should be a pretty sufficient amount. And then... Constantini, Ordesu. I think we can leave. No, you know what? We're going to do the same around here. We're actually going to reduce the number of siege artillery and just build up to 80 20 20. I think that'll be a pretty good setup overall. Three more levels. One, two, three. And then we need an additional ten levels of heavy tanks. should do. That should do just fine. Um, then for our smaller armies, I think we're mostly okay. But I think we can go ahead and replace... Let me see. How do Lancers compare to Light Tanks? Light Tanks are a lot better, but Lancers have a pretty good kill rate. So I think it's... So some Hussars in this army? We do not. I don't I don't know what that's about. I don't know why it thinks we've got Hussars. Yeah, I think at this point we can pretty much just completely replace Lancers with light tanks. So I might just go ahead and immediately reduce those. Because I think Lancers are really only okay. Yeah, I think light tanks are better. Light tanks are going to offer more of what we got. So those are in Scopia. These ones are in Ankara. So we'll throw an additional 10 levels in Ankara and 5 in Scopia. And that should be just fine. Um, so that's the Anadolu Ordosu uh, Reformed, Rumeli Ordosu, we're good to go. Oh no, we just did the Rumeli Ordosu, it's the Anadolu Ordosu we haven't done yet. Caesar and Konya, five. Isfahan, Northern Thrace, okay, so they're primarily in Isfahan, Northern Thrace and Konya, so let's just go ahead and build them. Northern Thrace and Konya. Alright, and that should be just fine for the light tanks. I think we're going to be good in terms of amounts. Because I think the ratio is... It's like two to it's like one to one, I think, or something like that. And then what about Constantino Ordesu? Okay, this army has no light tanks here, so we're gonna go ahead and just get started by building up uh, five levels, twenty-five levels of light tanks.
Alright. That should be plenty to do. Backroom dealings exposed, a stall event. Prominent members of the trade unions, outspoken supporters of protectionism and close allies of Metat Burhan, have been exposed in a corruption scandal, having exchanged political favors for personal gifts. One aide was all it took, one boy squeezing acne from his face in the right place at the right time to overhear the howling laughter, smell the rich tobacco blend, and spot Mitat Burhan's new golden cufflinks. One honest fellow's word to the right ears, and it was all uncovered. All right, we got 55% success chance right now. So, such is the nature of politics, this makes Burhan unpopular. Uh, throw them to the wolves, we need to clean up this mess. This costs us some bureaucracy and reduces enactment chance. This gives us a big penalty to, to enactment chance. Um, or we can get a setback for some enactment time. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with the second one. It's going to cost us some bureaucracy, but it's only temporary. Um, all right, and then I think we can speed up the game a little bit. I do want to do some more work with production methods. Because um, I am realizing, I think automatic bottle blowers might actually be really good for these glassworks. Um, this is going to save us a ton of labor. And we got plenty of oil in the market, I think. Yeah, we got plenty of tools available. And oil, yeah. Oh, we're close on oil, actually. Got to be a little bit careful about that. So maybe we'll hold off. Um, for textile mills, we got plenty of tools that enable mechanized looms. And we do automatic power looms, that's going to take electricity, but we don't have to go there straight away. Um, we got water tube boiler available in a bunch of places. Am I working on automatic dough rollers? I'm working on oil turbine. You know what? Let's just quickly knock out dough rollers, then we'll do oil turbine, and then... Uh, where was... What did I have? I think it was pneumatic ignition. Or compression ignition. The pneumatic tools we've already got. They're up here somewhere. Here they are. Yeah. Alright. So dull rollers will be ready pretty soon. That'll let us use some more of those those tools we got. Um, for tooling workshops, I think I'm going to try water tube boiler. Let me continue. Yeah, that's made them much more productive. Alright. Excellent. I'm going, to start, I'm going to start doing a little bit of water tube boiler stuff. Exile from Hawaii. We're still... Where are we with coal overall? We're still not the best with coal. We definitely need to be conservative about using... About not automating out too much. Using the... Uh, with all the coal we've got. How's the construction queue? We got... Alright, so this is going to be actually done really, really soon. Doing pretty well overall financially. So let's figure out. Italy is going after Oyo. Where are we with infamy? We're pretty much good, infamy-wise. Still can't get Java, right, basically? Yeah, 27.5. It's going to be too much. And all these states are still puppets of Britain, right? Yeah, they are. But the Sikh Empire is not. I think the Sikh Empire Protectorate... I'm still tempted to do that. I'm not going at it straight away, but I could. I think it's definitely an option. It's an option we've got. So, are we completely full up on coal? We're really not. So, if we built some additional coal infrastructure. We could really make water tube boiler a reality, I think. Um, let's just make sure that we build a couple of railways in these areas to make sure that we've got enough literal infrastructure available. And then... I think we'll we'll do a little bit more with water to boiler. Try to get more places going with that. The United Sovereign Archduchy is going after Communist Denmark. No, Denmark was a puppet of them, so they're just defending Denmark against its own communist rebellion. Right. And Scotland was also doing communism. Sorry, it's been a, it's been a little bit since I've been 
part of this situation. So, this is Madagascar. This is not Prussia. Oh my gosh, there's a Prussia and a Germany. That's wild. And Lithuania has just been cut in half by a communist uprising. Oof. Yep, that's a council republic for sure. So, does Königsberg have a port? Oh boy, standard of living in Königsberg is not good. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe leave that one to sort itself out. Things seem bad over there. I'm trying to expand east here, I'm doing my thing. Hey, there's dough rollers. All right, so I think if we do dough rollers, that's gonna make. A lot of these way more productive. Sure did. All right, perfect. So, how's that impacted labor availability? Pretty good. Pretty good. We got some unemployment. So let's take a look at places. Okay, so we've got plenty of unemployment in our in Turkey. So I think it's time. To replace that unemployment with uh, armed service. So let's do another army expansion. In these areas. Uh, we don't need quite that many. And then we'll throw in an additional... I'm going to cut the Lancers. Uh, completely, and then we're going to throw uh, 20 levels of heavy tanks and 20 levels of light tanks. Oh my goodness, we're having a huge infrastructure problem in uh, the capital. Oh, that's not great. Oop. In Trabzon. We need to increase employment in Trabzon. Tankers away. What happened here? And do I, and more importantly, do I have enough power to make the railways electric? I do. Well, that'll help a little bit. A lot of progress to voting. Wonderful. All right, so how are we with infrastructure now? We're still short. Ooh, that's not great. I really completely goofed this up. All right, well, we'll go ahead and build up some, uh... Well, hold on. We got, we got employment increase. And hold on, I'm just going to increase the speed here. And make sure this isn't completely a phantom thing. Right, so that's going up. But the amount of infrastructure is staying the same. All right, so we'll just go ahead and throw those at the top of the queue as well. And get those built up. And all these coal mines are already in production. So that should help out with the water tube boiler situation. So I'm going to take a look at some of our highly industrialized zones. And I have indeed created a little bit of unemployment. How much are we paying for that? Welfare payments, 9k. Virtually nothing. So that should be just fine. Where are we at welfare-wise? Oh, we're pretty low still. That's right, because I went back to one, because I didn't want to mess up my workforce ratio. Still, I would like to get back a little bit higher with that in order to just get my standard of living up north of 20, because the standard of living is actually doing really, really well. The middle stratum, are, the middle strata are prosperous. The lower stratum are are, are midland, which is pretty good. Um, but I want to uh. I want to get those numbers higher because there should be there should be benefits to to this massive empire we've got. I also want to take over Gojon. I could do that, but right now I'm pretty low on infamy, and if I'm continuing to be low on infamy, um, I should get all the way down so that I can go ahead and grab the Sikh Empire as a protectorate. And that'd be nice. Go ahead and make that happen. So. I 
I think it might end up being useful, and I have been doing this in my other in my other game. It might end up being useful to um, to turn some of these power plants into coal burning plants. Although I guess we're working on the technology for oil burning plants, and we've got tons and tons of oil because we're we control the Middle East. Time to time to fully mechanize these uh, these plantations. In fact, actually, we can save some more labor by putting them in rail transit. You know what? Everyone do it. They are more, more productive. They just don't think they are. Um, we can probably do the same with lumber camps. Just for the moment, continue. We should have some places we can do electric forestry at least. And rubber plantations, absolutely. Cool. I think that was an increase. I wasn't paying very close attention. It's probably fine. Let's do the same with the sulfur mines. Do I have a bunch of... Do I have a situation going on in North Borneo? I do have a little bit of unemployment in North Borneo. But I think this will overall increase the standard of living there. I don't have enough electricity to be going completely off the rails with it. So French Commune is going after Morocco, trying to turn them into a protectorate. I want to get my protectorate in the Sikh Empire before I continue messing about with Europe. All right, Italy is standing with Morocco as well, so that should be fine. But just for funsies, let's see... I can ask for the transfer of a subject. Ooh, I could ask for the transfer of commune art east Af Oh, no, I couldn't. They wouldn't give me that. Commune in South Africa, I can't reach there. Commune in Congo, can't reach there either. Those, that's useless. Useless. That's useless to me. All right, we'll leave it where it is for now. Really, a lot of these production methods, I'm, I'm kind of totally, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's long overdue, is, is all I'm saying, moving into these new production methods. I have created tons more buy orders of, uh, engines, but that's all right. Um, let's go ahead and build up some oil infrastructure. Because uh, we're going to be accommodating a whole lot more. What is this? Occitania. System to sway us against Russia. Occitania, you're a council republic with cooperative ownership. You're next to France. I think you might be better as a uh, protectorate of Russia, TBH. So I'm going to decline. We're having some electricity shortages. And the 9th Turkish Army needs a leader. Oh, no it doesn't. What it needs is to be disbanded. Just, there is no 9th Turkish Army. Um, Constantine Ordesu. Let me see. Jingoist Supply Requisitions Expert. Uh, persistent. Your... A good person for this. And a Dolo Ordesu. You have a Psych Affliction. That doesn't affect you yet. You're romantic. Reduced offense. Don't love that. But extra defense from defensive strategist. On the other hand, you're a surveyor, which is pretty good. You're a cocaine addict, which is pretty cool. But you're a communist. Uh, you know what? We'll split the difference. 
All right, that should be plenty. So, a lot of these places we've got shortages of um, power are going to be just fine once we've got uh, oil turbines unlocked. So in preparation for that, let's go ahead and expand our oil production. We've got plenty of labor here in Aravistan, so we'll just max it out. And there's protectionism. Government petition completed. All right, we've got oil rigs in Basra. We'll... Uh, Occitania, I don't... I don't desire an obligation from you. Occitania, will you dial it... Oh. They're also in the middle of a... No, Occitania, I, I don't... The situation in Occitania seems too complicated for an outsider to understand. Um, <laughs> that's why the Russians will be good at it. Oof. Oh boy. Um, yes, I'm aware of all these energy shortages. Transport shortage in need. But you've got you've got railways. You know what? How much? How's steel in our steel's fine. If I if I swapped our uh, railways just blanket over to steel, oh that would be just fine. No exemptions. I think that's the right call. You know what? Steel is the future. What does that do to the wood market? That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Yeah, wood's fine. I'm sure somebody needs wood. Oh my goodness, a lot of countries need wood. Duala, Austria, Hungary, Uganda. You know what? We'll even sell some to the, the communards and the British. Occitania, what now? <laughs> okay, wait. So, if we back them in this, and they loot, and, and, and they win, but they don't win against the Russians, do they still... No. No, I'm not, I'm not going to get drawn into this. Keep eyes on the prize. Eyes on the prize here. The prize is the Sikh Empire. A Khalsa state. I'm going to type where the power rests with the Maharaja. Cool. Let me take a look at their army production methods. This is going to matter. Okay, so we got some shrapnel artillery, some trench infantry, and some lancers. Over here, down here, irregular infantry, trench infantry, shrapnel artillery, and over here in Kashmir, you have shrapnel artillery, trench infantry, lancers, and irregulars. All right, I think I, I th I'm actually feeling quite confident in my ability to, to win a war over there. So that should be fine. Now, I was touching base with my production methods. Has that solved the railway problem? Only... Now, transport shortage in East Borneo. So let's go ahead and throw a few more railways under construction, into construction over there. I'm actually currently working on the army expansion that we queued up a little earlier. That should be good to go in a few weeks. So how are the armies looking? They're looking substantially larger. Particularly the 6th Turkish army is going to also grow. I was unemployment. Unemployment's about where it was before. Um, which is fine. Which is totally, totally fine. Alright, so with our infamy at 1.6, I'm going to go ahead and boost up the game speed a little bit. Revolution in Oceania, Communist Tahiti, okay. There's a lot of, hold on, let me at least take a look at these, these many and various diplomatic plays that are happening. All right, there's the fascist revolt in Occitania, there's Russia trying to take over Occitania. There's footage and all having a fascist uprising. Uh, Metropolitan Railway, lovely, I'll look at that in a second. Um, Sikkim is having a proletarian revolt. Um, 
British Republic is going after, is trying to annex Jaipur. Huh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll just need to take some of that territory from Britain once they finished annexing everything. Uh, proletarian revolts in Senegal, the whole business in Morocco, and then this is the communist revolt in Tahiti. All right, so the Metropolitan Railway. The grand opening of the Constantinople Metropolitan Railway has re was received with much celebration. In a speech, the president congratulated the engineers who made this possible. It is not only the railway that is electrified, but the whole city of Constantinople. The streets are abuzz with citizens marveling at the wonders of technology, speculating about what new innovation will come to transform our lives for the better. The engineers deserve a reward. Makes engineers more loyalist, or the rail our railway will be the envy of the world. I don't need to be the envy of the world right now. Well, it'd be nice to be the envy of the world, but I'd love to have some loyal engineers, so let's do that. Probably didn't need that, but, you know, feels worth it. All right, we'll go ahead and increase the game speed here again. Um, oh, goodness, we're actually kind of closing in on the end of the episode. So probably what I'll do is I'll get to the middle of the year. We'll let this infamy, and we'll, we'll, we'll do our war against the Sikh Empire in the next episode. We won't get distracted. We won't get, get drawn into any nonsense. We'll go there next turn. Um, this guy, Camille Mulos, is a Turkish anarchist. Interesting. Um... If you take over the Communist Party, the guy heading up the Agrarian Party is also an anarchist, so that could potentially be an issue. We got we got socialism in the Communist Party. I think um, it might be time for you to go. Time for you to go. And I think if this movement disbands, yeah, well, it didn't reduce radicalization from that movement, so I guess that was a limited utility. But it might disband, and if it disbands, then I'll be very pleased. I'll be overall feeling very good. All right. Hey, there it goes. And that's going to make my, my ratios here much, much better. How are we with this? We're getting there. All right, well, anyway, that war will be for the next episode. But for now, I've had fun. I hope you all have had fun. And I'll see you on the other side.